the Joe Rogan experience. I had Paulie Malinaji. He was at my gym, and uh, then he kind of knew. He goes, "Wait a minute! I just figured out who the fuck you are. You're the guy from the Hangover." Ah! He's freaking out. So, so I take that opportunity to ask him. Like I'm just asking him, like some boxing questions. Next thing I know, he's giving me a boxing lesson. How really? fucking cool is that? That is cool. Paulie Malinaji. Yes, it was three days he, ago. Is he really gonna do that bare knuckle boxing? Sure against is. Artem Lobov? Sure is. Yeah, and he's taking it personally. Yeah, but man, you don't want to break your hands. And you don't want to get your face cut up. Like, yeah. Is he done fighting? Like boxing box, he's like all 36, I know is he right? looked like he was in shape. He yeah. was like, and he was giving people pointers. He's very, he looks, he seems. I, I listen to him a lot on you know Showtime and stuff. Mm. He's cerebral as hell. I mean, he knows the game. He's man. very smart guy. Wow, he doesn't get hit a lot. No, yeah. I mean, no, and you think about a boxer that can talk as well as he can, oh, and as articulate as he is, and yeah, understand. I mean, if you watch the way he fights, like watch his fights with Adrian Broner, like he he knew how to figure out the puzzle. Yeah, that's Broner's hand speed yeah. and power punching, and he punches in volume. He's always in great. He shape. He was showing me patterns, like just basic things that I was like. Damn, I really like, want to see the actual sparring match between him and Connor because all the yeah. UFC released is Connor yeah. cracking him. I know it's a long one, it had to be. There had to be some f fun moments in that, yeah. I will also, know? I think apparently Paulie got off a plane and then he yeah. hadn't, it wasn't even really, in, he wasn't even working out that much. And he they thought go, he was gonna train with them, yeah. He didn't and they know go, We're going six rounds or something, and he was like, filming what? And they yeah. film it, yeah. That's and a, then they use it as a promo. Right. Like, Look, people are ruthless, bro. The, the idea that they weren't going to use that is more ridiculous. Come on. Wh who are you? You don't understand how this business works? But he's a they're Brooklyn promoting kid. A f they're promoting a f He's a Brooklyn kid. He's a smart guy. Listen, yeah. they're promoting a fight that is going to generate hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue. You think that they're going to spare your sensibilities? Yeah. They're going to spare your feelings and not show... But, edited versions of you getting popped. But my problem is, so the, I have a problem with that all across the board. How, because why? because I feel like um, when common decency, fair play, you know, mm -hmm. a contract, and, and sort of a contract you, you enter, I'm coming out to help you out. Yes. And then what you're going to do is use me. Go fuck yourself. Like, it's not- I believe they it's, paid I understand, him. I understand it's a business. I believe they paid him. I'm, I'm sure they did. I believe he signed paperwork over. Uh, well, I'm sure they did, but okay. that's a sneaky move. <laughs> it's fuck yeah, it's sneaky. And I and I I have a problem with it. Fuck yeah, it's in sneaky. general, I I just don't like justifying anything because it's going to be good promotion. I, I I'm always uneasy. You know how people say, uh, "Hey man, bad press," but you're talking about him. Yeah. yeah, but fuck off. I completely agree with you. However. To play devil's advocate, yeah. if I'm Mr. Businessman, Mr. Moneybags, that shit just went in one ear and out the other. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. That's a video of some shit that actually happened. Yeah. You hate the truth. Because <laughs> if, you, if you hate the truth, I can yeah. understand why you would want to show in that video. Right. But Connor did drop him. He did hit him with the left hand, I, and it's going to be a great fight. Connor McGregor versus Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> <laughs> and ironically, <laughs> might have been good for Paulie in terms of it creating this fight with. Our type, it creates, oh, yeah. it you're does. talking about him. Yeah. Although well, I think, I think Paulie Malinaji stands on his own, not only yes, as a boxer, but as an announcer. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's got a real name and he's, he's an excellent boxer. It's, he's probably one of the better commentators in the game, if not the best. Oh he's yeah. Very, very good. 100%. Yeah. Him and Andre Ward. Andre Ward's probably <laughs> my favorite. And Roy Jones Jr. Roy Jones Jr. is outstanding at it too. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Andre I mean, Ward, just like. He's brilliant. Brilliant uh, guy. Brilliant guy. Yeah. Just watching him like figure out Kovalev too, and, right? Especially in the second fight, unbelievable. Yeah, and the fact that you know he dropped Kovalev with a body shot, <laughs> and you know Kovalev said they, they they didn't give him a chance and that they just stopped the fight, but yeah. it didn't look like he wanted to keep going. I felt like that way with Amir Khan. Like, mm -hmm. and people are like, "Oh, what the listen, yeah. man, Amir Khan has nothing to prove. He has an amazing record. He's fighting a genius." In Crawford, mm -hmm. and probably, and, and there's no shame in this. He was supposed to fight um, Kell Brooks, and he kind of went. You know what? This guy is. He, he's time is on his side, and he's gonna. He's kind of figured this out. He's bigger, and he's gonna connect. He's gonna hit me and and maybe hurt me here. I I don't feel like doing this anymore. If that was the case, I forgive him for everything. It's like I thought it was a smart decision to well, find. A, and maybe he was really hurt. He's a Kel, warrior. The Kel I don't, I'm not fight. saying he's not, but. The Kelbrook fight would have actually got Amir Khan more money. It was uh, actually yeah, he wanted more to test valuable himself. fight. And he decided to take the fight against Crawford. He's a real fighter. If Crawford's not the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter on earth, he's number two. <sighs> 
He's one or two. I want to see him I with think, Earl, Earl Spence. Well, him Earl Spence is fantastic too. But I think the the argument of pound for pound is Lomachenko and him. That's the argument. Uh, Those mean, two guys are number one. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, who do you think is number one? I mean, I think. I you're think talking the about Earl Spence. You're talking about Crawford. Crawford. I don't know if Crawford they fought. I don't know. If, I don't think Crawford's fought enough competition. Like when he fights Earl Spence, and the, I, I think that Lomachenko has probably had more fights than you can really get into this conversation because he, he beats, hasn't. He, he has beats less everybody. Fights, but he's had less has fights. He, has he, has yeah. he had less fights? He won the world title with like four fights. I, yeah. Or, or was it how many fights? It, it was like something ridiculous like that. I mean, he fought a world class fighter his first time out. The, when I saw him fight uh, Jorge, um, what was that? Uh, amazing Mexican fighter uh, or somewhere like that. Who is the guy he Pull fought? Up his record here. He's thirteen and one, and Crawford's thirty five and zero. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Big difference. But but boxing's tricky that way, right? So what's what's the level of competition as they bring you up slow? Well, the difference you know, is Lomachenko had an extensive amateur yes, background internationally, fighter, yeah. but so did Crawford. Crawford had a great amateur background too. Look, Crawford. The the, the difference is Crawford's way bigger. That's yeah. the difference. If they were the same size, it would be really interesting to see what yeah. would happen. But Crawford's a lot bigger than him. He would. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's not a good fight. No. It's just. But to watch him take Rigandeau and all these mm -hmm. amazing fighters, Rigandio. Rigandio? Rigandio? I thought it was Rigandio. I don't think so. Rigandio? The way you Rigandio. pronounce it in French is Rigandio. 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 Um, um, but yeah, he, he dismantles people. His footwork is unparalleled. <laughs> but Terrence Crawford, man, first of all, he's probably the best switch hitter ever next to Marvin Hagler. Yeah. He might be better. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, I he, can, he can fight. How do you game plan for that? He How fights do you do it? so good orthodox and then so right. good southpaw. But to watch Linares, that's a Jorge Linares, I think is a sick fighter. And to watch him, he knocked Lomachenko down. Mm -hmm. But then again, like this guy figures you out. He just he goes, I know what you're doing now. Yeah. And then you're done. Well, so does Crawford. Yeah. I mean, the the best. I mean, that was Anderson Silva in his prime too. He would just figure out your timing. Yeah. Figure out what you do, how you enter, where the gaps are, where yep. the holes are. Okay, I see yep. the key to the castle. Let's rock. Right. And then somewhere around the end of the first round, Anderson would start switching stances on you and fucking doing some Bruce Lee moves. And the next thing you know, he's got his foot in your face. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he just figures you out. That's exactly right. These guys are just the the uh, really elite of the elite fighters. They're just the best at solving the little riddle that mm -hmm. is what your skills are. Now, how do you solve the riddle that is Khabib Nurmagomedov? That's Khabib. a different riddle. Yeah, because that motherfucker's not on the outside boxing you and so he's Connor. Connor for a while. You. Connor for a while. You know he's going to take you down. Mm -hmm. But what it looked like Connor for a while was isolating. He had two hands on that wrist. He was stopping him for a long time from closing his his hands mm -hmm. and and that seemed kind of effective for a while i mean Listen, good it's, luck it's a long <laughs> road that's like saying yeah. um you're running a marathon hey you know he beat me in the marathon but for the first hundred yards <laughs> i was way ahead i know that's what it's like it saying, doesn't matter because it doesn't matter it doesn't matter but this is a five round fight like yeah. okay you're keeping me from grabbing my hands for now right. are, your, are your hands tired yet yeah how are your forearms no i'm gonna How's take you i'm taking yeah. you down he's just gonna, he's keep gonna going. take you down that guy is so relentless, and the skill level and the endurance level he has to pursue that pace yeah. for five rounds. Like, I don't think I even appreciate it. I mean, I can intellectualize it, and I can describe it, but I think when you're in there with him, like when, when he fought Edson Barboza and he had Edson Barboza up against the cage. Come on, buddy. It's mine. Give up. Edson has this. No, that was against Michael Johnson. Oh, was, Edson has right. this thousand-yard stare. Where, where he's getting mauled. Yeah. It's just like, he's like breathing. He's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like, this is, this is a different kind of human being. <laughs> Those Russians are, that's a different kind of Those, human the being. The Dagestanis. So, they he's grow up fighting. From his time, he's a baby. Yes. He's a savage. Well, that culture, they, they were, they yeah. suffered that's a great deal. That's the look. He's like, Jesus <sighs> Christ. What the fuck <sighs> did I sign up for? Just look getting mauled and i love i love kobe looks like his legs his body looks like you know a guy you see at the pool kind of works out maybe a little it just doesn't he looks pretty fit i don't know uh, what the uh, fuck uh, you're talking I don't, about he's not, no <laughs> that guy looks fit barboza's really muscular Khabib's jacked man not what are you talking really. about he just so isn't show a photo of Khabib like mu making like a most muscular pose or something yeah. so he's fucking pretty jacked he's just not though he's no? just a freak no not compared to a lot of dudes yeah, go down there. Look at that. You know, because he's 
Dude, what are you I mean, talking well, about? I mean, he's jacked. But not, you know. He looks like a really strong grappler. He, he, he's got well, a full he's, fucking We know he pack. is, but really, like, like, the, look at him like. Uh, Shut your mouth. Hey, it looks pretty good there. Shut your tur- <laughs> your dirty, lie-spilling right, he's mouth. Got a, he's, he's pretty good What there. about that one right there? How about that one? Cut the shit, bro. I mean, it's bro. not. He's you're not a muscular. Saying, but... You look like that when you, when you were on thinner. T- TRT. Yeah, but when you were younger, that's what steroids. you looked like. It's basically the same. If I was in there, I'd, it would, you would call it steroids. You were always like that. Yeah, I was always like that. Yeah, yeah when I you was might young, have been more I was muscular like actually when I first met you. Yeah, than I, that. I didn't even take vitamins. No, you were just then. jacked. I that remember the first natural. time I on Mad TV, you were jacked out of your mind. Yeah, and it was just because you lifted weights. Well, that was when I was just getting into jujitsu, so I really started lifting weights heavy because I was tired of getting mauled. Yeah, so I really got into lifting weights. I was yeah. like, I am weak. I'm like, I, yeah, because I'm used to striking. Striking is so different than grappling. So different in terms of the demands on your muscles and your fatigue. <laughs> yeah, it's so. But and it it works the other way too. Because I remember I hadn't done any striking at all in like a year. Like I had done none, zero, just jujitsu. And then uh, my friend Jamie and I started doing. Um, Jamie um, is a um, a trainer, and we were doing this uh, training session, and he had me hit mitts too, and like just hitting mitts for like a couple of minutes. I was gassed out. I was like, "How yeah. is this possible?" I was yeah. like, "I work, I roll all the time. I'm in good shape right now." Sparring's that way. When you come, we get guys who are triathletes or whatever, and they come in, and uh, Wayne McCulloch. Shout out to the great Wayne McCulloch, my trainer, who I love. Um, I love he, that guy. He's the best. I fucking that's one of my favorite people in the world. Like whenever I see him, all is right in the world. He's mm-hmm. just a humble yeah. man, silver medalist in the Olympics, world champion, and nobody asks him questions in the gym. It's like he, he that you have this gold mine, this guy here who's who beat Morales, who fought Prince Nassim to the distance, and nobody knows it, and he never tells anybody. And I'll see these guys hitting, and I'm like, Wayne, why don't you tell them? And he goes, They don't ask me. I don't. I don't bother them. He's just the most humble dude in the world. Like it drives me fucking nuts but long but anyway uh, he, we'll get like triathletes people who are in really good shape but if you if you're sparring and you're afraid to get hit you stop breathing and yeah. so in three minutes in two minutes i don't care how good a shape you're in the minute you get punched once you're like <laughs> yeah it took me literally it probably took me three years to get over that in a way because uh, i have no confidence as a boxer and i shouldn't <laughs>